hopefully he's going to find a way to get us onto Facebook Live. Um, if not, we'll show the recording later. So thanks for being here. Um, we are here for the Wave Mastery. It's our Wednesday night midweek gathering. It's our time to just pause and stop and do spiritual practice together and to really go deeper in our awakening. Sundays are wonderful. Classes are amazing. But Wednesday night is the deep dive and it's for the deep divers. So if you're here, you're a deep diver. And I really appreciate you for being here to be a part of this conversation. I am streaming to you from Michigan. So I'm technically on my vacation, but the only thing I'll be doing over my vacation is hanging out with you midweek. So pass the word. If anyone's missing me in Naples, come on Wednesday night. We can hang out together. I would absolutely love that. So The Way of Mastery is a book. Um, as you guys know, it, um, in three books, the first book one is The Way of the Heart. It's a small little book. You can get it online um, at Amazon. We have it in the bookstore at Unity Naples. If you are in the area, you can always go buy it there. But we're reading this together, and we're moving slowly through it. We're digesting it. We're really letting the words, which are really encoded with the guidance and the awakening of, of Jesus' energy, um, we're letting them do their magic upon us. And hopefully, you're giving yourself some time to do some of the practices that come up um, in, during our reading together. So with that, let's, um, let's do our meditation. I'm excited to do this with you, and I'm interested in taking a little bit longer of a time. So join me as you close your eyes, if that's possible for you. Take a nice, slow, deep breath in through the nose, blowing out through the mouth. Breathe in through the nose. Fill up all the way. Hold it. And exhale. And a third time, breathing in through the nose, filling up all the way, hold it, and exhale. And a third time, we'll do this, breathing in through the nose, hold it at the top. And exhale. And allow your breathing to go to its natural rhythm coming in and out through the nose. Follow the breath. Keep your attention on the breath. In fact, focus your attention on the nostrils at the entry point of the air. There's a sensation that happens. Keep your attention there. And just keep it there. Focused attention on the tip of the nose and the sensation of the breath coming in and allow the body to relax and relax and relax. Release any thoughts when they capture you. Bring your attention back to the sensation of the breath entering the body.
release the thought, return your attention to the breath, relax the body. Allow your attention to drop into your heart space and imagine a campfire burning in the center of your heart, center of your chest. It is the eternal flame, the purifying flame. And imagine standing at the edge of that campfire, feeling the warmth, hearing the crackle, And in this fire, imagine resentments pouring out of you and and flowing into the fire. Perhaps you can imagine opening your mouth and exhaling into the fire. (sighs) Like that. That will release from you the resentments, the energy being held, the judgments the pain bodies, you can release all of this, breathing it out into the fire. Imagine the fire receiving it and burning it up, dissolving it. Imagine placing into the fire any belief in separation, any pain, any struggle, any judgments against yourself or another. Let the fire have all of it so that you can be here tonight fully present and available to receive the gifts that are here for you. There are miracles abounding here for you. You have chosen to come here tonight to awaken to the Christ light that is within you. And do not think for one moment that there are not angels and guides and enlightened beings all around you, supporting you in this intention. Do not think that you are alone in this intention and in this divine appointment. Know that it is your higher self that has brought you here tonight. And your higher self, if you will allow it, is guiding and directing and bringing you home bringing you home to the heart, bringing you home to the sacred place within yourself where you know your oneness with the divine, bringing you home to the power center of being that is within you. Take a breath. There is a power center of being. That power center of being is eternal, long before this lifetime, long after this lifetime. It's who and what you are. So we awaken that tonight with a blessing, and we come together this evening open, receptive, purified by the fire, and happy, happy to be together in a community that is awakening. And so it is. Amen. Okay, everybody. So... <laughs> Sandra's here. I'll end up from Unity and Linda Collins. Cause we're, all right. That's so good. Thank you, Sandra. So it uh, looks like we have a smaller group tonight, and it doesn't look like we're flowing to Facebook Live. So we're sorry about that, but we'll make up for that somehow. So pull out your book if you have it with you. If you don't have your book, don't worry about it. 
just listen, open your heart, really be here. Put down any um, distractions. Let this next 40 to 45 minutes be yours. So we begin at the very bottom of page 43. By the way, right above the very bottom of page 43 was the five minute every hour invitation. Last week we talked about, in fact, it says, um, that's right, five minutes every hour. Can you feel the awesomeness of that? Well, I did not hour, but I did a lot of times. I did a lot of times of just recognizing where I am, recognizing that I'm the creator of where I am, 100%. It was a very rich experience for me. So I hope you played along even a little bit, even a little bit. All right. So at the bottom of the page, the very last sentence, those who truly love God and would truly awaken will feel something compelling them to master the simple practice for five minutes of each hour. They will learn to delight in and to look forward to it. Pretty soon, those five minutes will stretch into six, then 10, 15, and 50, until finally there's established in their awareness the unchanging realization that everything that arises, they have decreed it, and so it is so. Five minutes every hour, it's not much to ask. For five minutes every hour, be as you are created to be, a creator decreeing that which brings forth experience. Never again allow, listen to this, this is important. Never again allow yourself to say, well, I'm really here because I have to be. I'm really just doing this because it's what I have to do. Take the words ought, should, must, and have to, and write them on a piece of paper, look at them, then light a match, and light the corner of the paper, and let the paper dissolve to dust. So, if you have a piece of paper, we're not bypassing this exercise, my friends. Grab something. I was grabbing a piece of paper. And we're not going to burn it, but we're going to do a little ritual here. So the words that you want to write on your paper right now should, must, have to. Write them. Should. Must. Have to. Beth burnt hers earlier. You're such a good person. <laughs> good for you, Beth. All right. For the rest of us, Beth, you hold the space for us. Should, must, have to. I'm going to hold this paper. Hold it with me. If you couldn't write it down, just imagine holding it in your hands. Close your eyes. And every single time I ever said I should, may it be dissolved from my consciousness may be dissolved from all of our consciousness. Every single time we said the word must, we must do something. May that be dissolved from our consciousness, from our past, from our present and our future. May all repercussions from this be dissolved. And the words, I have to. Every single time we have spoken them, may the repercussions of those words be dissolved, disappear, past, present, and future. May we never, ever, ever be haunted by these words that chain and bind us to fear, to the past, to being trapped, to playing victim. May we forever be freed from this. Enjoy me if you can. I'm just ripping this to pieces. Just get rid of this. No more. <laughs> All right. So. Hopefully you did that, or at least you did that in your mind, okay? So, and this is important. I'm going to stop here. I know you know it probably, but let's really, let's really take the time to, to be, um, be clear about this. We are divine creators. This book is telling us that nothing is happening to us except by our choosing. We are literally creating our world every piece of it so hard to comprehend but the absolute truth and so when we say i should or i must or i have to we are giving our power away and we're not playing that game anymore so that's why we took the time to rip that up and pay attention 
set something in your brain that goes off whenever you use those words again, catch yourself. I have to do this. I must make sure blah, 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 blah. All these ways that we trap ourselves. We want to clear ourselves of those. All right. This is a symbol of allowing the energy you've given those words to become again as the dust or the ash of the ground. Clear from your consciousness all identification with such words, for all of them are denials of reality, capital R. Many times I've shared with you that you need do nothing. Listen to those words and take them into yourself as though they are your own voice because they are. I need do nothing. Really breathe this in, you guys. I was listening to this on my drive um, from Florida to Michigan, and I was listening to the section. I was like, oh man, it's so good. I need do nothing. Reading on for a moment. You do not have to survive whatever told you you had to. You do not have to make everybody happy, whoever told you that you had to. Whoever told you that you could make anybody happy, you do not have to abide as a body in space and time. Whoever told you that you had to, you do not have to pay your bills. Who told you that? You literally need do nothing. It is quite different from wanting or choosing to do something. You do not need to love your parents. You do not need to honor your father and your mother. You do not need to worship me or love me. You do not need to love yourself. You literally need do nothing. For need, quote unquote, is an expression of the perception that there is something you lack. Because you are one with God, there is never a moment when you lack anything at all. Can you allow the thought to emerge in the mind when you arise in the morning, I need do nothing. I don't have to get out of this bed. I don't have to go to an office. I don't need to fulfill that order. I don't need to say good morning to my mate. I literally need do nothing. For how can there be the power of freedom to choose and to create when you're being governed by the belief of the world that you must be a certain way? The belief that you need to be acceptable to others, that you need to conform and fit in, that you need to dress the way others dress, and that you need to be committed to surviving an extra day upon this plane. There can be no freedom where there is need. So let's pause there. And let's actually breathe that in a little bit deeper. So back to the page, the statement is, I need do nothing. So join me in closing your eyes. We're doing the experience right now, just breathing in and out. I need do nothing. I need do nothing. I need do nothing. I don't need to. Clothe, clothe myself, bathe myself, feed myself. I don't need to survive. I need do nothing. I don't need to make money. I don't need to take care of my home. I don't need to clean anything. I don't need to do anything. I need do nothing. I don't need to love anybody. I don't need to love myself. I don't need to take care of myself. I don't need to contribute to the world. I don't need to contribute one single thing to the world. Breathe in. Stay with me. I need do nothing. I don't have to do anything. I don't, I don't need to take care of somebody. I don't need to be liked. I don't need to be appreciated. I don't need to be attractive. I don't need to be anything. I need do nothing. I don't need to sleep. I don't need to get up in the morning. I need do nothing. Breathe that in. I need do nothing. Get yourself all the way into the center of that. You don't need to do anything. Take a breath, and then very slowly get in your choice, power of choice. I choose to be here. I choose to dress myself. 
I choose to get up in the morning. I choose to pay my bills. I choose to love people. I choose to go to work and to contribute what's mine to do, not mine to do, what I choose to do, <laughs> caught myself. I choose to go to work and do what I choose to do. I choose to take care of my body. I choose to clean my home. I choose to take the garbage out. I choose everything and everyone. Breathe that in. I choose where I'm living, what I'm doing, what I'm saying, who I'm hanging out with. I choose my feelings. I choose my experience. I choose to give love and make a difference in the world. That's my choice. No obligation. I choose to grow in loving God because I want to. I choose. Take a breath. Hopefully you dug that. Um, it's re <laughs> I did. <laughs> I really dug that. Um, it's so cool, isn't it? We trap ourselves with our words so much. So we got rid of, we totally got rid of should, must, have to, um, and we don't need do anything, but we're choosing. Everything in your experience, everything bar none is choice, okay? Good work, my friends. All right, so we are right at page 46, practicing the first two axioms. These are the first two axioms of the way of the heart, to be built on, to be remembered, and to be cultivated daily. I highlight this or underline this. I am created as my Father created me to be. I am free. And nothing sources my experience but me in each moment. Nothing has an effect upon me whatsoever, save that which I choose to allow to affect me. I need do nothing. So those are the first two axioms. In the beginning, we would suggest that you practice this second axiom in the morning and in the evening as you are rising and as you are retiring. At least twice in each of your days, we ask you to cultivate for five minutes a repetition of this thought so that you feel it in your bones. I need do nothing. That's what we just did. We took the time to feel in our bones no, we are not obligated. We don't have to make anything happen whatsoever. Getting rid of all, oh my God, layers and layers and layers and layers of all of those lies and all of that obligation and trapping and victim consciousness. It all dissolves when you do this work. So super important. It will come as quick, quite a shock to your consciousness. The mind will say, but I have all these things I have to do. What about this and what about that? Oh my goodness, will the world stop spinning if I stop needing? That is up to the world. It's not up to you. The power of these first two axioms will be what everything that follows is built on. Yet everything that follows is merely a way of watering these two axioms and making them the anchor of your awareness. For when the anchor is firmly in place, you will literally create whatever you so desire from perfect freedom and from perfect deliberateness. Isn't that awesome? That's what you get out of this. You get to literally create whatever you so desire. Whatever. You know, I was thinking, I, when I was looking at the Bible, um, flipping through it the other day, I landed on whatsoever you ask in my name. And I looked at that, and I've heard this before. It wasn't new to me, but it caught me again. It was like, whatsoever, there's no rules. Whatsoever I ask, in what, whatsoever you ask in my name, it shall be given. My name, my nature, the I am present. Whatever you ask in the nature of wholeness and connection, that which you ask for will be given. And they're saying it here in their way for when the, in the, Anchor is firmly in place. You will literally create what 
whatever you so desire from perfect freedom and from perfect deliberateness. You will even transcend miracle mindedness. For miracle mindedness is still a stage of perception just short of mastery. That's interesting, isn't it? Mastery comes when you know that you are literally and deliberately creating. There's nothing miraculous about it. You will decree a thing and it shall be so. Just going to read these next two paragraphs to complete our reading for tonight. That is to create as God creates. For while God marvels at you, God knows perfectly well that your creation was not a miracle. It was very deliberate, born from the pure radiance of love. God does not sit on God's throne and say, I wonder if I'm worthy to create my children. I wonder if I'm worthy to express myself through the divine spark of consciousness that they are. Never does it enter into the holy mind of God. I wonder if it's okay if I create a solar system. <laughs> God receives a thought, or a thought emanates within God's holy mind. God decrees it, and it is so. And God looks upon all things and says, it is very good. Man, this is really good. So we're going to stop there. We're going to stop at exercise and conscious creation, which would be great to, to keep reading next week. But just to, to, to bring the reading to a close again, go back to page 46. And let's read these first two axioms again to really anchor them because that's what we want to build the rest of our time around. I'm created as God created me to be. I am free. And nothing sources my experience but me in each moment. Nothing has an effect upon me whatsoever, save which I choose to allow to affect me. I need do nothing. All right. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. I'm going to grab my drink one second. All right, friends. Let's take a deep breath as we move into the second part of our time of being together. I want to once again anchor yourself in I need do nothing. And I want you to pay attention to what comes up. Now we've been immersed in some holy vibration, so it might be quiet for a moment. But listen to the underbelly. I need do nothing. What does the underbelly tell you? kind of looking for that part of you that doesn't believe it, isn't buying it. You're looking for your excuses. Just pay attention. Let it come up. Imagine it's like shining the light in a, in a big, dirty, dingy basement <laughs> in the corners and through the cobwebs. I need do nothing. All right, and whatever comes up, we're just letting it come up. And um, I ask you to maybe share about that. You can put it in the chat, or you can just um, raise your hand and talk out loud. Like, what comes up for you when you think this idea, I need do nothing? That's the invitation. Um, that's the direction tonight. And we want to really anchor in that. So what's your resistance? What comes up? What questions do you have? What excites you about this idea? Put it in the chat or share by raising your hand, and I'll just call your name. <laughs> 